those who live in the northeast of the United States, specifically New York and New Jersey, you woke up today in a state of emergency ahead of not one, but possibly two nor'easters within a short period of time. We are also going to cross the Atlantic to La Palma once again. As just a few hours ago, it was noted that La Palma is as active as ever and as strong as it was in the beginning of this eruption over a month ago, with each day bringing seemingly a new crazy theory or story, a few of which have taken over the internet by storm. We are going to revisit some of these and then we're going to talk about all the latest information coming out of La Palma and we're going to do it all right here, right now. Let's go. And we are back, my friends, October 26, 2021, at 10.48 a.m. And we're going to start with the United States and these storms very quickly, and then we'll move on to La Palma. So just hang tight for one second. And as I said, the Northeast, you are in a state of emergency, specifically New York, New Jersey. And also, you are seeing what is now dubbed Invest 94L, and you can see that right here on your screen. Now, this is potentially a byproduct of what this Nor'easter is going to do. So very quickly, we'll look at the GFS graph again, and you can see that Nor'easter pulling up as we're speaking right now. And then once it does break out into the Atlantic Ocean, it has the potential to become a possible cyclone. That is why it is now an invest. Believe it or not, we are still within hurricane season, even though it's been weeks now since we've had even a threat of a hurricane. It seemed like a switch was flipped and hurricane season ended, but we are being reminded how quickly it can come back. Some of the readings in this forecast are showing over 70 miles an hour. We could easily be pushing hurricane force winds in the Northeast here. You can see specifically areas of Massachusetts, Connecticut, at Long Island here are more than likely going to get the brunt of this first wave. We can also see here on the GFS, once this nor'easter hits and kind of peaks out here, then we're going to see byproduct of it, which is the possible invest or formation of a cyclone. According to the GFS, we don't really get too much of a formation, and even if we do, chances are it's going to bank off into the Atlantic and more than likely finish its lifespan there. I will be back in Canada, and I will be sure to give you all the updates on both of these nor'easters and whatever potentially happens after, but now we got to move on to La Palma. And that is going to begin with this article right here. You can see just a few hours ago, La Palma was determined to be an even greater strength today over a month after the eruption than it was when it first began. When it comes to volcanoes, usually the bulk of the eruption and the strength happens at the beginning and then it tapers off. La Palma has proven to be a very different monster, and if that alone wasn't enough for you, the different stories and theories, some real, some probably not, has been being discovered and noticed about this island and the Canary Islands as a whole. And for those of you that follow the channel, you know that yesterday we tried shedding some light on one of these theories, which we will talk about after this one, because this one's a little fishy. And I have seen it all over the internet over the last couple days, and it is a video game that absolutely exists and existed from 2009. And in this video game, for those of you that don't know already, you are shown a map of La Palma and you're given some dialogue about an evil plan that is taking place in this video game where some sort of attack is manufactured on this island. And without a doubt, within this video game, it clearly shows the purposeful destruction of the island involving a mega tsunami unbelievable. This also from the video game. Now we know there have been studies done on the possibility of this, so in my opinion, the creators of this game knew about that science and took the time to add it to the game. As crazy as this may seem, finding a video game that depicts the exact situation a lot of us have been talking about, we have to understand that the situation has been studied and before this game came out, the possibility and theory of a big wave hitting the east coast of the United States or traveling across the Atlantic because of La Palma was a very real possibility. And I'm just not sure what else to say about this. It's really hard to explain this one away. So it was very important that I included it in this video. It's one of those crazy anomalies in the internet world and will more than likely add to the conspiracy of La Palma till the end of time. Very quickly before we move on to the grid quakes, as I'm sure you were all waiting for, just a very quick touch on the stats with La Palma's current numbers. We are in week six now. This volcano started on September 19th. 7,000 people have evacuated 
destroyed their homes. 5.0 magnitude earthquakes shook the island on Saturday. We talked about that. 35,000 tremors in total. Over 2,200 buildings destroyed. And no short or medium term end to the eruption as a whole. All right, and as far as the grid quakes go, my friends, I know this is a popular subject. I was definitely one of the first ones to bring this up weeks ago around October 5th, and since then it has completely blown up. And I tried explaining this yesterday. We do have a great explanation from the actual website that gave us the grid to begin with. That is the ESMC website. You're looking at an article right in front of you now that they put out because of the hysteria going on about these grid quakes, which I have to admit I was part of. I did not know what these were in the beginning, but I quickly tried to explain this as I figured it out. I will just read this for you very quickly before I let you guys go. Unfortunately, there are currently articles going around that misinterpret plotted quake epicenter data for recent quakes at La Palma. One should understand that reported quake locations are necessarily rounded values and if plotted on maps are arranged on a grid reflecting simply the margin of error of measurements normally the size of the last digit after the decimal I hope you're following if rounded to two digits in latitude slash longitude it's an approximate one kilometer resolution in this case. So long story short, we're not so much dealing with sensors built into a mountain here. We're dealing with a software program that EMSC uses that rounds up or down the longitude and latitude of earthquakes from their exact location to then be present at a specific area within a grid on a volcano. Now I'm sure that doesn't make sense to a lot of you. It didn't make sense to me at first, but it finally clicked and it does explain what we're seeing. Now again, I want to be very clear that I'm not stating that I know these answers or that this is the truth or that is the truth. I'm simply bringing you the information and the interesting stuff going on so we can analyze it ourselves as well and come up with our own conclusions or figure out the actual real answers together. And that's what I'm going to let you guys do while I let you go here. As I said before, I'll be reporting from Canada tomorrow. So I hope to see you here for that video. And I appreciate each and every one of you. Questions or concerns, please leave down below and I will talk to you all very, very soon. Shout out to Canada. Be safe in the Northeast, and I'll be back very, very soon. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Stop right there, my friends. If you have not already, click that subscribe button, and don't forget to hit the bell icon. Click all, and you will get all notifications from this channel, and trust me, you won't be disappointed.